thank you all so much for joining me for a 75-minute uh, yoga class. We will start with three rounds of sun salutations to warm up our body, and then we will hop into 26 and two yoga sequence, 26 postures and two breathing exercises. If at any point in class something does not feel right for your body, please remember that you can modify the posture, you can do something else, or you can skip it entirely. There is a method to, you know, what postures we're doing in what sequence, and yoga sometimes can be challenging, and that's okay, but you're never going to a point of pain, a point where you can harm yourself or others. So for the sun salutes, you can come towards the top of your mat with your feet close together. I'm going to stand back and show you in periphery. Take a moment, standing up nice and tall, arms down by your sides. Bring your hands together at heart center, and we'll begin with three rounds of Surya Namaskar A sun salute. As you inhale, lift your arms up overhead, look up as if you were saluting or greeting the sun. Exhale, bend your knees and fold forward, arms with your ears, hands to floor, relax your head. Inhale, lengthen into a halfway lift, back flat, hips over heels, shoulders away from your ears. Exhale, bend your knees, put your hands on the floor, shoulder width distance, press your hands down, feel your biceps engage, and step back into your high plank or tabletop position. On your next exhale, hug your elbows in and lower down. Imagine you're pulling yourself down to the floor, hover just above. Inhale, come up into a back bend. You can do cobra with elbows bent and thighs on the floor, or up dog with arms straight and thighs off the floor. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up for down dog. You can pedal out your legs, bend one knee, straight the other, lift your heels to the ceiling, and then press your heels down to the floor, tailbone to ceiling, look for your thighs behind you. If down dog does not speak to you, come down onto your knees and take a child's pose instead. Sink your hips down towards your heels, stretch your arms forward away from your body. On your next inhale, hands to the floor, look forward, step forward, lengthen back, halfway lift. Exhale, bend your knees and fold, relax your head. Inhale, arms with your ears, hands together, reach your eyes, lift up, look up overhead. Exhale, hands down at heart center, two more. Inhale, lift your arms up, look up. Exhale, arms with your ears, fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. You can have your hands on your thighs, your shin, or the floor in front of you. Exhale, bend your knees, hands to the floor, step back into your high plank or tabletop position. On your next exhale, imagine you're pulling yourself down to the floor, hover just above. Inhale your up dog or cobra. If you're doing up dog, make sure that your thighs are off the floor. Exhale your down dog or child's pose. If you're doing down dog, spread your fingers wide, root down through all 28 knuckles, especially the space between your index finger and thumb. Externally rotate your shoulders, press your hands into the floor, drop your head, look for your thighs behind you. Try to create a nice expansive back. On your next inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen, halfway lift, shoulders away from ears. Exhale, bend your knees, fold. Inhale, arms with your ears, hands together, lift up, knees can bend. Exhale, hands down, heart center, last one. Inhale, lift your arms, look up. Exhale, bend your knees and fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step back, high plank or tabletop, keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale, your up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog or child's pose. If you're doing down dog, for the last one, try to get your heels on the floor. You can take a wider step if you want. So press heels down, lift your hips up, lift your kneecaps up, press your knuckles down, take a breath. Inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen, shoulders away from ears. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your eyes, lift up. Exhale, hands down and heart center. Wonderful. So that's our little warm up. We will now hop into 26 into yoga. Come to the middle of your mat with your feet together, toes, heels touching nicely. Interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs, and glue your knuckles underneath your chin. Rock your weight into your heels. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears. You made it to pass. Concentrate, meditate, and begin. Inhale, chin down and arms up. Breathe in through your nose. Lift your elbows up. Suck your stomach in, fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up, exhale through your mouth. AJ, down, head back, arms forward, elbows touch. Good, inhale, chin down, slowly bring your chin down, look straight ahead, lift your elbows all the way up, breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up, slowly push your head back, 
Look way, way, way back for the wall behind you, arms forward, elbows touch, pointing forward. Inhale, head down, use your chin to push your knuckles down. Keep your fingers interlocked up to the webbing, palms face the floor. Exhale, head up, now use your knuckles to push your head back, squeeze your palms together, wrists together, forearms, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. Every you inhale, you want to take in more air than the last breath to expand your lung capacity. Exhale, head up. The more you exhale here, the more fresh oxygen you can take in on your next breath. Push the air out. Inhale, head down. So make this the deepest breath so far. Breathing into the top of the lungs, middle of the lungs, bottom of the lungs, full lungs. Exhale, head up. In our day-to-day -day life, we don't really use the full lung capacity, but the lungs need to be worked out like any other part of the body. Inhale, head down. This is the last breath in the first set. Make your spine a little longer. Elbows a little higher, lungs a little fuller. Suck your stomach in, breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up. Take your time, let everything go through the exhale breath. Any worries, any cares, let them go. Be here now, elbows touch. Good, change, arms down, come roll out your shoulders and head. Second set, feet together, interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs, glue your knuckles underneath your chin. Squeeze your thighs. Squeeze your butt, grow taller out of the base of your spine, and begin, inhale, chin down and arms up, breathe in through your nose, lift your elbows up, suck your stomach in, fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up, exhale through your mouth, slowly head back, stretch your arms forward, keep exhaling, elbows touch. Inhale, head down for one, two, three, four, five, six, full lungs. Exhale, head up for six, Five, four, three, two, lungs empty, one. Inhale, head down. We may never know how many licks it takes to get to the bottom of a tootsie pop, chin down, elbows up. Exhale, head up, but we know that it takes about six seconds to exhale here. Slowly head back, slowly arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. So you're learning to breathe slow. Synchronize your breath with your body movements. Exhale, head up. Take your time. Slowly look way, way, way back. Arms way forward. Stretch arms forward. Elbows touch. Inhale, head down. Keep the weight in your heels. Thighs tight. Glutes tight. Stomach in. Exhale, head up. Keep your abdomen engaged. Press down through your heels. Lift up through your kneecaps. Arms forward. Elbows touch. Inhale, head down. This is the last breath. Second set, make it the deepest breath of your life. When your lungs are totally full, surprise yourself. Take in one more sip of air. Exhale, head up. Take your time, let everything go through the exhale breath. Any worries, any cares, let them go. Be here now, elbows touch. Good, change, arms down. Ardha Chandrasana with Padasatana, half moon with hands to feet pose, feet together. Inhale, arms overhead. Palms together, interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, nice tight grip, stretch up, and bend right and left, right and left. Every time you pass through the middle, reach up a little taller. And when you can't stretch anymore, come to stop in the middle. Bring the weight into your heels, push your hips a little forward, squeeze your palms together, upper body back, touch your biceps to your ears. Inhale, breathing, stretch up, out of your waist, try to touch the ceiling. Exhale, breathing absolutely straight lines, slowly bend your body to the right. Without bending your elbows and knees, continuously push your hips to the left beyond your flexibility. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling in the left side of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes. Just remember it's the first posture of the day and there's no rush, nowhere you need to be, nothing you have to prove to yourself or to anyone else. All you have to do is breathe in and out through your nose. Keep the weight in your heels, hips a little more forward, upper body back, touch your biceps to your ears. Push your left hip forward to get your two hips in line. Now bring your right shoulder forward, open your chest like a flower petal blooming, come down, push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up, hips forward, arms back, stretch up and slowly bend to the left as you press your hips to the right. Come down without bending elbows or knees. So in yoga, we're more interested in form than in depth. So if you're coming down all the way but the knees and elbows are bending, lift up instead. Lift your chin, lift your chest, squeeze your palms together. Bring your head and arms back. Touch your biceps to your ears. From the side, you want um, your neck in line with the rest of your spine. Keep the weight in your heels, hips forward, chest up. Right hip a little forward, two hips in line. 
left shoulder forward, two shoulders in line. Keep your hips and chest facing the front of your mat space. Get a little deeper at the end. Come down, push, push, push. Change and heel to come up. First back end of the day. This is the only posture I can't show and tell at the same time. Take a deep breath, pull arms, keep your eyes open, relax your head back as far as it goes. Maybe give your head a gentle shake. Look for the floor behind you, squeeze your butt, lift your chest, and immediately bring your arms back with your ears, try to touch the wall behind you. Full spine back bending from coccyx to the neck, lower back, middle back, upper back. Keep the weight in your heels, inhale breathing, push stomach, thighs, hips, everything forward and bring your arms back, look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back, change. Inhale to come up, stretch up, arms with your ears, Exhale, bend your knees, go down, arms with your ears, hands to floor, relax your head. Go for a walk, move your hips, shake your head. This is a U-turn from back bending to forward folding. At the beginning of class, your spine might not be quite warmed up yet. Move your hips to get your lower back nice, relaxed, comfortable, easy, flexible. Hada Satsuna, hands to feet pose, bend your knees halfway. You can grab the backs of your calves, your Achilles, or your heels from underneath. Step on all 10 fingers, pull on your heels. Pull your weight into your toes and lift your hips up. Stretch your upper body down from the lower spine to the floor. Pulling is the object of stretching. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling on the back of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes with a smiling, happy face. It's kind of poetic. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, lift your hips up, stretch your spine down. Good, change, come up, arms with ears, hands together, knees can bend. Very nice, arms down. And you stand a little taller. Second set, feet together, inhale, arms overhead, palms together. Interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, hips forward, arms back. Imagine you're leaning against the wall behind you, stretch up and slowly drop to the right as you press your hips to the left. Maybe you come down a little deeper in the second set, maybe you don't. We wanna be good scientists here. So use what you learned in the first set of this posture to inform the second set. In the first set, you had to come out early or you were having trouble breathing, maybe do a little bit less. If at the end of the first set, though, you felt like not much had happened, maybe you go a little bit deeper. Inhale, lengthen your arms. Exhale, come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up, hips forward, arms back, stretch up. Slowly drop to the left as you press your hips to the right. Squeeze your thighs and your glutes the whole time. Keep the weight in your heels, hips a little more forward, upper body back. Squeeze your palms together the whole time. Wrist straight, put your biceps to your ears, especially super strong left arm, left leg. Push your right hip forward to get your two hips in line. Now bring your left shoulder forward, open your chest like a flower petal blooming on a beautiful March day. Come down, push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up, second heart opener. Deep breath, full lines, keep your eyes open. Relax your head back, squeeze your tush, lift your index fingers up to the ceiling, and then bring your arms back with your ears. So notice if the knees or elbows are bending or the wrists are bending, use your joints here. So squeeze palms together, wrists straight, arms straight, legs locked, keep the weight in your heels. Inhale, breathing, push stomach, thighs, hips, everything forward, arms back, look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back. Change, inhale to come up, stretch up. Exhale, bend your knees, go down with a flat back, arms and ears, hands to floor, relax your head, go for another walk, move your hips, shake your head. Second set, here we go, bend your knees halfway, you can grab the backs of your calves or your heels from underneath. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes and lift your hips up. From the side, you wanna look like a ham sandwich, no room for light and air between the upper and lower body. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, lift your hips up, push your knees back, lock your legs, lock your legs, lock your legs. Change, come on up. Try to come up with a flat back, straight spine, good. Arms down, and you let that one go. Awkward, Utkatasana, step your right foot to the right. Six inches, hip width distance, insides of your feet, parallel like 11s. Arms up, parallel to the floor, tricep muscles tight, abdomen in, bend your knees, sit back and down into a chair. Feet flat position, spine straight to begin with, 100% of your body weight in your heels. Sit down halfway only, hips into a chair. Suck your stomach in and lean your upper body back, depression to abdominal wall, contraction to abdominal muscles, suck it in, hold it in tight. Shift a little bit more weight back into your heels. Lift your chin up, chest up, lean back, fall back, way back, change. Inhale to come up, keep your arms there. Push your hips a little forward and now lift your heels up. Come up maximum on your tippy tippy toes like a ballerina. Stretch up first, bend your knees, sit down. 
point your knees forward. Notice if the knees are coming in or out, that means the hips are opening in or out, right? Keep the hips square, heels a little higher, knees a little higher, sit down into a chair, but don't sit below a chair. Change, inhale to come up. Last part, still breathing, squeeze your knees together, let your heels come a little bit off the floor and slowly sit down. You can stop whenever you want or keep sitting down until there's a half inch gap between your hips and your heels. Squeeze your knees together and forward, lift your chest, soften your shoulders and change. Slowly come up, knees together. Good, heels down, right foot back, arms down, take a breath. Go again, second set, step your right foot to the right, same footprint inside to your feet, parallel like 11s, arms up, parallel to the floor, triceps tight, fingertips active, bend your knees, sit back and down into a chair. So you can stick your butt out and fold forward to get your thighs parallel to the floor. Notice if your knees or toes are coming in or out, keep six inches between toes, heels, knees and hands with your chin up, chest up, good, change. Inhale to come up, keep your arms there, push your hips a little forward, spread your toes wide, lift your heels, stretch up first, engage your quadricep muscles and then bend your knees, sit down. So the leg muscles are working here, abdominal muscles firing, triceps tight, heels up, knees up, sit down, change, inhale to come up. Last part, still breathing, squeeze your knees together, let your heels come a little bit off the floor and slowly sit down for a count of 10 in your head. The slower you do, the better you do. Stop when there's still a gap between your hips and your heels, squeeze your knees together and forward, lift your chest, Drop your shoulders, re-engage your fingertips, triceps tight, change, slowly come up. Good, heels down, right foot back, arms down. Eagle pose, Garasana, look at your arms, identify which arm is right, which arm is left. Don't mix them up, okay? Inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, swing your right arm under your left arm, right elbow under left elbow, cross first at your elbows, again if you can at your wrists, palms together, thumbs towards your nose. Pinkies towards the front of your mat. You can also interlock fingers, grab a thumb or grab your shoulders and give yourself a big bear hug. Pull your elbows down, bend your knees, sit down into a chair, just like awkward in Kukasana. Keep your hips down low and bring your right leg over your left leg, right leg over left leg. So one of the things that I love about this sequence of yoga is that every posture prepares you for the next one. So we did chair pose, right? Hips into a chair first so that now we know how to sit down, right? Keep the weight in your heel. Stick your butt out a little bit, bend your knees, hold forward, and then lean your upper body back at the end. Good, change, feet together, arms over your head, let's do the left side. Bring your left arm zoom, under your right arm, left under right, palms together, thumbs towards your face, pinkies away from your face. Pull your elbows down, bend your knees, sit down into a chair, just like chair pose, stay down there, and bring your left leg over your right leg. Left over right cross twist, and eventually wrap your left foot behind your right calf muscle. Doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, arch your upper body back. Bring your knees to the left, upper body to the right, twist like ropes. Sit down and lean back. Good, change. Feet together, arms over your head, right in the second set. Bring your right arm zoom, under your left arm. Notice if your hands are going to the left of your face. Try to bring your hands back to center and then pull left shoulder down, shoulders even. Bend your knees, sit down, keep your hips low and bring your right leg over your left leg. Right over left, cross twist and eventually wrap your foot. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, arch your upper body back. On this side, bring your knees to the right, upper body to the left, twist like ropes, sit a little bit lower, lean your upper body back at the end. Good, change, feet together, arms over your head, that looks fun, Matt, last one. Bring your left arm under your right arm, pull elbows down, bend your knees, sit down, try to keep your hips low and bring your left leg over your right leg, left over right, cross and twist. This posture is decompressing the seven major joints in the body, deltoid, scapula, elbows, wrists, hips, knees, and ankles. Try to line them all up, wrists over elbows, elbows over knees, Knees over ankles, shoulders over hips, sit down and lean back. Change, feet together, arms over your head, arms down, party time. You can grab a sip of water if you want. Cheers.
Let us continue standing head to knee. Dande, Amana, Janu, Shirasana, everybody's favorite. Shift your weight to your left leg, lift your left kneecap up, lock your left leg, lift your right leg up, you can point your toes, flex your toes, keep your toes flexed back to your face. Option to stay here or interlace your 10 fingers, round down and pick up your right foot. All 10 fingers interlocked, webbing to webbing grip. Throughout the posture, standing legs should be solid, concrete, one piece, lamp post, unbroken. You have no knee, you've been coming for a while. You know your left leg is locked, no bend, no wobble. Inhale, breathing, slowly, gently lift your right leg up. Stretch it forward until your right leg is exactly parallel to the floor, no higher, no lower, standing leg locked. Take a breath. Kick your heel forward, flex your toes back, you're training your Achilles to stretch. If standing leg is bending, posture hasn't started. If both legs lock, start to bend your elbows down. Touch your elbows to your calf muscles. One day, elbows go below the calf muscles. Lock your knee, lock your knee, lock your knee. Change. Slowly reverse out. Shift your weight to your right leg. Evenly distribute your body weight on your right foot without grabbing the floor with your toes. Lift your left leg up. Point your toes, flex your toes. Keep your toes flexed back to your face, abdomen in. Option to stay here. You're already working on your balance and your strength. When you're ready, start to round down and pick up your foot. Now it becomes a compression posture. When we round our back this much, we start to squeeze and compress the abdominal wall, good for strengthening the core. You know your standing leg is locked, no bend, no wobble. Inhale, breathing slowly, gently lift your left leg up. Take a deep breath, kick your heel forward, flex all five toes back towards your face from the ankle. This is a great way to stretch your Achilles and the backs of both legs. So if both legs lock, you feel tremendous stretching feeling on the backs of both legs, maybe even a cramp on the top of your thigh, start to bend elbows down. Touch elbows to calf muscles, bring the shoulders and chest down. One day elbows go below the calf muscle, heel forward, toes back, abdomen in, change. Slowly reverse out. You put your hands on your back, do a little back bend, boom, or an even. Huh. Second set, shift your weight to your left leg, evenly distribute your body weight on your left foot without grabbing the floor of your toes. Lift your right leg up, flex your toes back, stomach in when you're ready, round down and pick up your right foot. I'm already having trouble. When you're ready, ground down and pick up your right foot. If you ever have one of those days, concentrate, meditate. Don't forget to have fun. Inhale, breathing, lift your right leg up. If your standing leg is bending a lot, think about lifting your hips up so both legs lock. Then start to bend elbows down. Elbows go below calf muscles. Slowly tuck your chin to your chest. Put your forehead on your knee. Hold wherever you are for five, four, three, two, one. Take your time as you slowly reverse out. Good for you. Last one, shift your weight to your right leg. Big toe points forward inside of your foot, parallel to your mat. Lift your left leg up, flex your toes back, stomach in, round down, pick up your foot, webbing to webbing grip. Lock your right leg, eyes open, inhale, lift your left leg up. Notice if your heel is coming in and the toes are coming out, that's the hip opening. Bring your left heel to the left. If both legs lock, hips are square, bend elbows down. If elbows go below calf muscles, slowly tuck your chin to your chest. Put your forehead on your knee. Lock your knee. Lock your knee. Lock your knee. Whenever you're ready, take your time, slowly coming out. Good for you. That was a forward curl, a compression posture. Next, we do a back bend, opening the front of the body. Standing, go pulling pose, Dande Amana, Dhanarasana, feet together, bring your right hand up, elbow touches the body, palm faces the ceiling, bring your hand out to the right, give yourself a high five for practicing yoga, almost forgot, oh my gosh, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist, pick up the inside of your right foot at the ankle, thumb with your index finger, it's probably like bad luck not to high five ourselves at this point, right, bring your left arm up, right hip forward, knees together, lock your left leg, Point your right toes, take a breath, stretch up, and slowly charge your body forward. Simultaneously, kick your right leg back and up. Take your time. Slowly bring the body down and the leg up. See the foot come directly over the top of your head from the side. Two heels in line. Kick back and up. In other words, two shoulders in line. Touch your chin to your shoulder, shoulder blade scapula, stretching away from the body. Kicking and stretching equal simultaneous. 
the harder you kick, you can balance forever. So kick really hard. If you fell out, just hop back in, body down more, leg up more, kick, kick, kick. Very nice change. Slowly kick yourself up. Bring your left hand up, out to the left. Reach back without turning or twisting your wrist. Pick up the inside of your left foot at the ankle bone, thumb with your index finger, right arm up, left hip forward, knees together, hips in one line. Lift your right kneecap, point your left toes, take a breath, lift up, and slowly charge your body forward. Simultaneously, kick your left leg back and up. So we say kicking and stretching equal simultaneous, but also remember the harder you kick, you can balance forever. Actively push your left foot into your left hand. You're kicking in two directions. You're kicking back and you are kicking up. As you're ready, you're gonna start to come down. So one day, the foot comes directly over the top of your head. From the side, two heels in line. Slide your shoulders apart, two shoulders in line. Body down more, leg up more. Keep kicking, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, slowly come up. So if you fall out five times, hop back in six times, we'll always try to end on one leg. Second set, bring your right hand up, out to the right, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist. Pick up the inside of your right foot at the ankle bone, thumb with your index finger, left arm up, right hip forward. Lift your chin, lift your chest, stretch up, and slowly kick, stretch, and breathe. Kick into your hand, stretch forward to the wall in front of you, Breathe through your nose. Maybe your right hip down a little bit, left hip back, left shoulder forward, open your chest, lift your chin. Body down to parallel, big toe to the ceiling, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, kick yourself up. Last one, here we go. Bring your left hand up, out to the left, reach back, pick up the inside of your left foot, right arm up, left thigh forward, hips in line. Lock your right leg. Point your left toes, take a breath, stretch up, and slowly kick, stretch, and breathe. So you might notice that this side of the posture feels different from the other side. You also might notice that this posture feels different in 70 degrees versus 40 degrees, or a dry day versus a rainy day, a happy day versus kind of a grumpy day, right? So external factors affect our yoga practice. Make sure you are being nice to yourself. You are using this yoga as a way to reflect on your life as a whole. Lock your right leg, point your left toes, kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly, kick yourself up. Come to the back of your mat space, tool of Nasana, balancing stick, feet together. Inhale, arms overhead, palms together. Interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs and lean back. Step your right foot forward a big step, stretch up, point your left toes, and when you're ready, come down to parallel. Arms, body, head, legs, everything parallel to the floor from the side. Body makes a T like Tom, but not a broken umbrella. Body down more, leg up more, stretch, 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 change. Left foot down, right foot back, very nice. Let's do the other side. Step your left foot forward, stretch up, point your right toes and tilt. Slowly come down to parallel. Keep your biceps of your ears, arms and neck as an extension of the rest of your spine. Chest down, chin forward, leg up, palms together, stretch. Change, right foot down, left foot back, arms down, hold still. Hmm. Second set, arms overhead, palms together. Interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, lean back. Step your right foot forward, stretch up, point your left toes, and when you're ready, come down to parallel. Um, I'm gonna stay light and lifted. Sometimes the setup of a posture is enough, especially we're dealing with an illness or an injury, squeeze your palms together, keep your wrists straight, biceps of your ears, stretch, 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 change. Left foot down, right foot back, lean back, step your left foot forward, lock both legs, point your right toes and tilt. Imagine you're trying to turn on a light switch with your right big toe. So really stretch the heel away from the hip, stretch your index fingers away from your shoulders, stretch, 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 change. Right foot down, Left foot back, arms down, enough of that. You are welcome to come to the top of your mat and face the long side of your mat for the next three postures. I will continue to face you. Standing, separate leg stretching. Dandayamana, Dikapta Pada, Ashimotanasana. Inhale your arms over your head. 
Exhale, step your right foot to the right, big step. Arms down parallel to the floor, turn your toes in, heels out, lock your legs, lift your chest, and swan dive forward. Okay, grab your heels from behind, roll forward, keep stretching, keep pulling, touch your head to the floor in between your feet. You can grab the outside of your feet, you can grab your pinky toes, you can take a bigger or smaller step, you can always start with your hands on the floor in front of you. Everybody roll forward, find your edge, lift your hips up, lift your kneecaps, keep pulling, keep stretching, touch your head to the floor in between your feet. Good, change, slowly come up, take your time, no rush. Step your right foot back, arms over your head, and arms down. Very nice. If your head touched the floor easily in the first set, take a smaller step. If your forehead was nowhere near the floor, try taking a bigger step. Second set stretching, I'll show you from the side. Arms up, step your right foot to the right, big step. Pose in, chest up, go down. Stick your butt up, all the way down. Very nice. If you can, grab your feet, try to bend your elbows back. Elbows to caps, shoulders to ceiling. Belly back is fine. Everybody roll forward. Roll, touch your head to the floor. If your head's not yet touching the floor, take a bigger step. Roll forward again. Lift your hips up. Lock your legs. First the legs stretching, then the hips stretching. Lower spine stretching, whole spine stretching, whole body stretching. Three, 60 degree angle stretching. Coccyx to toes, coccyx to forehead. Touch your forehead to the floor. In between your feet. Good. Change. Slowly come up. Take your time. Step your right foot back arms over your head and arms down. Go team, triangle, trikonasana. Inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, step your right foot to the right. Big step, four feet minimum, arms down parallel to the floor. This is a hip and chest opener. So to start, push your hips forward, lean your upper body back, turn your right foot out, maybe left toes in a little bit. Inhale, breathing. Bend your right leg and lunge. You can bounce a couple times to warm up your hips and knees. Then see how low you can sit without bending your left knee. So keep your left leg straight, lunge, keep sitting down, lean back, and move your arms at the same time. Right elbow in front of the knee. Hover your fingertips between your big and second toe, not your heel. Don't touch the floor. Don't push any weight on the floor. Look up to the ceiling. Touch your chin to your shoulder. Maybe lift your shoulder up. Touch your shoulder to your chin. Push your left hip forward and down. Push your right knee back with the help of your elbow. Sit a little bit lower and then lift your chest up. Turn, twist upper body back, lock your left leg, keep your left foot flat on the floor. Change, rotate your arms, straighten your right leg, right toes in, left toes out, make sure your heels are in line. Keep your right leg locked, inhale breathing, bend your left leg. You can bounce a couple times, you can try taking a bigger or smaller step if it helps you sit down. Sit as low as you can, lean back and move your arms at the same time. Left elbow in front of the knee, cover your fingertips between your big and second toe. Look up towards the ceiling, touch your chin to your shoulder, breathe through your nose. Push your right hip forward and down. Push your left knee back with the help of your elbow. Stretch your arms apart. Try to get your left side body off of your left side, turn twist, block your right leg, keep your right foot flat on the floor. Change, rotate your arms, straighten your left leg, left toes in, right foot back, arms over your head. Float your arms down. So think about everything you do as part of your yoga practice, including like how you move or hold still between postures, and also what stories you're telling yourself. If negative self-talk starts to creep in, this is a wonderful place to practice being nice to yourself. Second set triangle, arms over your head, step your right foot to the right, big step, four feet minimum, arms down parallel to the floor, push your hips forward, Bring your upper body back, turn your right foot out, left toes in, bend your right leg, sit down, lean back, and move your arms, elbow in front of the knee. So eventually your right thigh bicep will be parallel to the floor, but that might not be your reality today, and that's okay. If your thigh is not yet parallel to the floor, maybe just have your forearm in front of the knee, so you still get this long diagonal line, but you're not collapsing all the way down or staying all the way lifted, right? You wanna feel this connection from your left ankle all the way through your left hand, sit down more, chest up more, lock your left leg, left foot, flat on the floor, change, rotate your arms, straighten your right leg, right toes in, left toes out, make sure heels are in line. Inhale, bend your left leg, lunge. You can rotate your right hip forward if it helps you sit down. Then lean back, keep your spine straight in the middle and move your arms, elbow in front of the knee, right arm up to the ceiling, look up, make sure all five fingers together, 
thumb with your index finger, triceps tight, reach your right arm up, stretch your left arm down. So this huge stretch across your chest, sit down more, chest up more, left rib cage forward, right rib cage back, walk your right leg, keep your right foot flat on the floor, change, move your arms, push left heel on the floor, left toes in, right foot back, arms up, and arms down. So the heart is picking up a little bit. This is usually the part in class where we want to go fast or where we've been practicing for a while. And so our attention span is waning. Me too, I'm right there with you. This next posture on a like psychological level invites us to go slow, even with an increased heart rate. And it invites us to stay in the present moment, not rushing. Second or first set of head tweaks. See there I am, Johnny Strasna. Inhale, arms overhead, palms together, only cross your thumbs. Exhale, step your right foot three feet, 36 inches. Can you stay in the present moment? Pivot on your heels. Try not to anticipate, just participate. Turn your back, left toes in. Push your left hip forward. One, two, three, four, five times. Two hips in line, two heels in line. Backside foot makes a 45 degree angle. Stretch up. Tuck your chin to your chest and go down. Chin to chest. Abdomen in. Round your spine. Bend your front leg, put your knee and head together. Um, how we do one thing is how we do everything. So if you tend to rush through postures, um, skip steps, maybe think about where that might be showing up in other parts of your life as well. And if you find that it's not useful to kind of try to worry too much about the future or stay too far behind in the past, yoga is a really wonderful safe space to practice being right on time. Chin to chest, throat choked, jaw relaxed, eyes open. Stomach in, breathing normal. Push your forehead into your knee a couple times real quick. Lock both legs, hands together. Change slowly on through. Left hip forward, left shoulder forward, full stop at the top. Good, pivot on your heels to the other side of the room. Uncross your heels, turn your back toes in. Push your right hip forward, one, two, three, four, five times. Stretch up. Back your chin to your chest and slowly go down. Try to press your right hip forward all the way down to your hips. Stay in line, both sides of your back, down equally the same. Bend your front leg if you need to. You can also take a bigger or smaller step. Try to touch your knee and head together. Front side compression, throat choke, eyes open, breathing normal. This is the second of our head to knee Johnny Shirasana compression postures where we're strengthening our core and massaging the internal organs. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together, change, slowly uncurl, arms with your ears, chin to chest, head up last. Good, pivot on your heels, float your right foot back, arms down. Second set, standing separate leg, head to knee, Johnny Shirasana, inhale, arms up, palms together, cross your thumbs. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, three, two, four feet. Pivot on your heels, turn your back toes in, push your left foot forward, maybe your right hip back. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down, arms with your ears. Think of your arms as the extension of your rounded spine. Chin to chest, abdomen in. Again, you can bend your front leg, take a bigger or smaller step, try to bring your knee and head closer together, but you're never forcing your body. If rounding your spine this much feels like you were uh, like tugging or pulling on your back and not in a pleasant way, you can flatten out your back a little bit, no problem. Eventually, you're going to push the floor away from you and touch forehead and knee together. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together. Change, slowly uncurl, biceps and ears, left hip forward, full stop at the top. Good. Pivot on your heels to the other side. I'm going to face you. Make sure your heels are in outline, but they're not crisscross. Push your right hip forward, palms together, stretch up. Tuck your chin to your chest and you go down. Take your time. You're right on time. Chin to chest, bend your front leg, touch knee and head together. Stretch all 10 fingers beyond your big and second toe. Bring maximum weight to your left front foot, left hip up, right hip forward, two hips in line, throat choked, jaw relaxed, eyes open, stomach in, breathing normal. Push your forehead into your knee a couple times real quick. Lift both kneecaps, lock both legs, hands together, change, slowly uncurl, 
chin to chest, arms and ears, head up last. Very nice. Pivot on your heels, step your right foot back, arms down. Come to the middle of your mat for our hip opening series, starting with tree pose, Tadasana. Walk your left leg and lift your right leg up. Touch your heel to your costume, sole of your right foot, flat to the ceiling, slowly gently let your right knee drop down and back into a half lotus shape. Please never force your body. Right hand up to the center of your chest. And if you can balance left hand, elbows down, chest up, take a breath. Good, change right leg down, shift your weight to your right leg, lift your right kneecap and lift your left leg up. Touch your heel to your costume, slowly, gently, let your left knee drop down and back. You can bring your left hand up. And if you can balance right hand, elbows down, spine straight, press your hips forward, your foot starts to slide, you can hold on to your foot with your hand. Good, change, left leg down. You're welcome to do a second set of tree. You can also try another fun posture called toe stand, Padanusthasana. Pick a spot on the floor, four feet in front of you, don't move your eyes, help some balance, lock your left leg, lift your right leg up, balance already off. You can bring one or both hands together, Namaskar. Option to stay here or when you're ready, start to fold forward. Hands to the floor and lean forward, lift your left heel, bend your left knee and sit down. Walk your hands back to either sides of your hips and breathe through your nose. Left hand up to the center of your chest. If you can balance, right hand up, elbows down, spine straight, come a half inch off your heel. Good, when you're ready, hands to the floor, you can come up on two feet or lift your hips up to straighten your standing leg and then press your hips forward to reverse out. Good, change right leg down, lock your right leg, lift your left leg up. Um, if your foot is prone to sliding, hold on to your foot on the way down. Otherwise, you can bring one or both hands together and start to fold forward. Hands to floor, lean forward, lift your right heel, bend your right knee, sit down. Walk your hands back to either sides of your hips. Point your left toes, lift your chest, left hand up, right hand up, elbows down, spine straight, come a half inch off your heel. When you're ready, um, you can come up on two feet or you can put your hands on the floor, push your hands into the floor to lift your hips up and then push your hips forward to reverse out. Very nice change, left leg down, honor yourself, give yourself high five, fist bump, turn around, savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. I'm gonna adjust the angle just a little bit, okay. Okay, bring your heels together, let your toes fall open, arms down, palms face the ceiling, eyes open, mouth closed, breathing normal. Take a slow inhale through your nose and a slow exhale through your nose. I watched a rock climbing documentary this weekend. Um, some of you may have seen the rock climbing movie Free Solo, which is about. Um, climbing El Capitan in Yosemite without ropes, um, which is a good movie, but also really crazy. And you may have heard me talk on that in yoga occasionally, but this movie I actually thought was better. It's made around the same time and it's called the Dawn Wall, D-A-W-N Wall. Um, and it's not about free soloing. So the guys have ropes on, but um, it's two men who climb like the most difficult route of El Capitan in Yosemite. Like it's actually never been done in a concert, but it's been done since it happened in 2015, it actually became like a media phenomenon. So you might have remembered reading about it in the New York Times or stuff like that. But um, really great documentary, strongly recommend it. Uh, one thing that was fascinating to me is even though they're in ropes, right? So you know that if they fall, like they're gonna be caught, whenever they would fall, they would still scream. And these are guys who have presumably fallen off the side of the mountain thousands of times, right? Both of them are professional rock climbers. It is their job um, to fall in order to one day not fall, right? You have to fall in order to get it right. Same thing in yoga. You got to fall a bajillion times so that one day you can finally stay in it. Um, but it was fascinating to me that every single time they scream. Um, and I, they didn't talk about why that was, because I would kind of think at some point, right, don't you know, like, going to be hot. It's okay. 
But to me, what I saw was um, a discharge of emotion when something scary happens. So the central nervous system picks up and they scream to discharge that from the body. So then it's out of the body and they can move on time again. I'm very interested in how we like discharge energy, especially like during COVID, for example. I think yoga is a really wonderful way when you are feeling like amped up, reactive, not necessarily in a good way. Yoga, same thing as like taking a walk or listening to your favorite song, but yoga is a wonderful way to discharge that energy in a safe way so that you can continue to do what you love. Bhavani Mukhasana when you're leaving pose. Bend your right leg up, interlock your 10 fingers, grab your right shin, then tight right knuckle grip, pull your knee out to the right, down towards your shoulder, completely avoid your rib cage. Keep your head on the floor, look down the center line of your body, pull down next to the heart, maximum pressure in your lower right abdomen. Change right leg down, bend your left leg up, pull your knee out and down, try to get your knee towards your shoulder. If your right leg does not naturally touch the floor, try flexing your right toes back to your face to anchor the right side of your body down. Change, left leg down, both legs lift up. Grab your elbows each other. Give yourself a really big hug for coming to class today, good for you. Squeeze your knees together and down. Keep your head on the floor. Look down the center line of your body and hold still. Eventually or in the future when the bone joint skeletal system has improved the whole spine from coccyx to the neck will be flat on the floor. Change, arms down and eyes open. So there's this book that was published this year on burnout. And one of the things they talk about how is like how our emotions are like tunnels. They have a beginning, middle, and end. And where we get burnout is where we don't go through the tunnel, right? We get stuck or we try to go around it. So what I saw when I would watch these guys fall off the side of the cliff over and over and over again, right, is that they would scream every time and that's them going through that, right? Where we get burnout is where we don't have that reaction. Um, where we don't acknowledge what we're feeling or what just happened, and then it just gets stuck inside of us. So I'm not suggesting that if you fall out of standing bow pose that you scream, but I am suggesting that maybe you take a moment before you hop back in, take a breath, feel what it feels like in your body to fall, and then hop back in, right? But it's that little moment in between, the same way with them falling, it's that little moment in between that helps us get a little bit closer to balancing, to holding still, to breathing, to being at peace the next time we try. Second set, bend your right leg up, interlock your 10 fingers, grab your right shin, pull your knee up and down. Or sometimes in a posture, right? You like just for whatever reason go a little too deep in a posture and it's like, ouch, ooh, that hurt, right? You just want to practice acknowledging, ouch, ooh, that hurt. You don't want to ignore it, you just acknowledge it, you take a breath, and then you try again with that knowledge of mind. Change, right leg down, bend your left leg up, pull your knee out and down. Try to keep your right shoulder down, right hip down, right leg down, look down the center line of your body. Change, left leg down, both legs lift up, grab your elbows each other, give yourself another big hug, squeeze your knees together and down, keep your head on the floor, tuck your chin in a little bit, tuck your chest up a little bit, let your belly be heavy, squeeze your knees together, press your shins into your forearms, try to get the neck, shoulders, Middle spine hips, full spine flat on the floor. Chains, arms down and eyes open. Next, we do a straight leg sit up. If you have any concerns about your back today, please skip the sit up, roll off to the side, and meet us on your stomach. No problem. Otherwise, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Elbows to the floor, forehead to knee. Okay, very nice turn. Lie on your stomach for the spine strengthening series, starting with Cobra, Bhujangasana, good for your lower lumbar spine. Place your hands flat on the floor, just below your shoulders, so your elbows point up to the ceiling like grasshopper wings. Zip up your legs like your cobra's tail, toes and heels touch. Lock your legs, look up and lift. Stretch your upper body off the floor. Use 100% back strength. Come up halfway only, just your belly button on the floor. The rest of your chest is in the air. Elbows stay bent, we make an L, a 90 degree angle like a rectangle. Roll your shoulders back and down. Elbows to hips, feet towards the back of your mat. Toes, heels touch, lock your legs. Look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good, change, slowly lower down. Look to your right, left ear on your mat, arms down, palms face the ceiling, toes together, heels fall open. So I love, um, well, I really like a lot of different <laughs> documentaries, but I love documentaries on rock climbing in particular, because um, 
what you realize, or like ballet, for example, things that have a lot of repetition. Um, what you realize if you've ever seen free solo, right? You see this guy climb a rock without a harness, is that he's climbed that route, I don't know, 20 times, 100 times before that. And it's his expertise that makes it still crazy. I do not recommend free soloing ever, um, but it makes it more understandable, right? Because he's been there a thousand times before. I find that very interesting in the context of this style of yoga in particular, because every single one of you in this class has been here before, right? You know what the second set is. Chin forward, place your hands flat on the floor, just below your shoulders. Elbows point up towards the ceiling. So what do we do with this expert knowledge? Feet together, toes, heels touch, lock your legs, look up and lift, stretch your upper body off the floor. I'm not suggesting that you do this posture on the side of the mountain, but you would be better off doing it than somebody who'd never tried this yoga before, right? Feet together, toes, heels touch. So you have this knowledge that lives in your body. Press your hands down, lift your chest up, breathe. Good, change, slowly lower down. Look to your left right here on your mat, arms down, heels open. And now we have cool anecdotes like, um, I've heard of a practitioner of this style of yoga with Alzheimer's who can't remember a lot, but he remembers the sequence of yoga, right? Because it's a muscle memory that lives in his body. Same thing with like piano players with memory loss. Same thing, they can often still play those songs because it lives in the body, right? So let's be interested in what we're choosing to let live in our body. If you don't scream when you fall off the side of the mountain, then that anxiety lives in the body. If you let it out and then you breathe, then like the good stuff gets to live in the body, right? The lock the leg stuff. Chin forward, locust, shalabhasana, arm straight position. Rotate your arms, palms face the floor. Bring your arms underneath you as best you can. One day pinky fingers touch. Lock your right leg, point your right toes, lift your right leg up. See the foot come directly over the top of your head to a 45 degree angle, half of 90. Press your shoulders down, spread your fingers wide. Lock your right leg. Point your right toes, lift your thigh up, change, slowly lower down, relax your right leg, lock your left leg, point your left toes, and lift your left leg up. Try to keep hip and forearm in contact so the sole of your left foot is flat to the ceiling. Press your shoulders down, point your left toes, lift your thigh up, change, left leg down, third part, tuck your chin and mouth down, nice long neutral neck here. Spread your fingers wide, feet together, knees touch, lock your legs, point your toes, lift both legs up, come up. Everybody come up, you can do it, struggle a little harder. Don't give up, mouth down, shoulders down, triceps tight, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes, lift your thighs up. Good, change, slowly lower down, bring your arms out, look to the right, left ear on your mat, and take a breath. Feel your heart racing. Blood circulating through the arms, down to the fingers, the toes. Second set, bring your chin forward, arms straight position. Rotate your arms, palms face the floor. Bring your arms underneath you as best you can. One day pinky fingers touch. Lock your right leg, point your right toes, lift your right leg up. And keep the sole of the foot flat to the ceiling. You want your ankle, knee, and hip, and shoulder in line. So notice if the leg is going in or out, Keep the leg nice and long to the back wall. Lift your heel up to the ceiling. Chain your right leg down. Relax your right leg. Lock your left leg. Point your left toes and lift your left leg up. Press your shoulders down. Triceps tight. Squeeze your butt. Lock your legs. Point your toes. Lift your thigh up. Change left leg down. Grand finale. Make up your mind. Mouth down. Imagine your feet coming over the top of your head. Use a little bit of imagination. Squeeze your butt. Lock your legs. Point your toes. Lift both legs up. So one day you're going to feel the feet come all the way up. Keep picturing it. Hold a high vision for yourself in your mind. Knees, feet together. Lock your legs. Squeeze your butt. Point your toes. Lift your thighs up. Change. Slowly lower down. Bring your arms out. Look to the left and take a breath. So our body keeps score. And there's like tons of studies, tons of books coming out on this very topic, right? Um, but the body keeps score. The body remembers. Some things we don't get to choose that our body remembers, right? Like I have PTSD from a car, from two car accidents. That will probably live rent-free in my body for the rest of my life. But there's other things that we do get to choose what our body remembers. Those are the things that we do repetitively, like this yoga, right? So make sure that you're doing it in a nurturing way, in a loving way, so that your body, sure, body keeps score of some of the not so fun stuff, some of the traumatic stuff, but body also keeps score of some of the like really beautiful, exciting stuff, right? That's what we're working on here. Pranish Shalabhasana, full locus, chin forward, arms out to the side like airplane wings, feet together, 
toes and heels touch, lock your legs, point your toes, look up and lift. Arms, body, head, legs, everything lifts off the floor, like the 747 taking off, just your hip bones on the floor, the rest of your body is in the air. Look up towards the ceiling where your eyes go, body nose to follow. Keep your neck in line with the rest of your spine. So you're not dropping your head down. You're also not jamming it all the way back. Fingers together, knees, feet together, lock your legs. Eyes up, chin up, chest up, look up, come up a little higher at the end. Good, change slowly lower down, tuck in your rings, look to the right, take a breath. Second step, bring your chin forward, arms out to the side, feet together, toes go touch, lock your legs, point your toes, look up and lift. I had a very strange experience in that first step where just as we were supposed to come up higher at the end, I had this like gas bubble, like a burp that was like coming out of my chest. That had never happened to me before where you were pushing down and feeling a gas bubble move through you at the same time. That is also something I like about this style of yoga. Even though the postures stay the same, our experience with them is different. Every once in a while, you still get surprised. Lock your legs with your thighs up, chin up, chest up, look up, come up a little higher at the end. Good, change, slowly lower down, tuck in your legs, look to the left. But we have to stay present to get those occasional surprises. Like even if you've been practicing this style of yoga for a long time, as many as we have, right? Sometimes we just kind of like phone it in, right? I'm right there with you. Sometimes that happens. But on those days where we can stay present in our body, using the mind-body connection, using our breath throughout class, that's where we start to notice like, oh, this posture feels different today, or this feels a little bit different. And that's the that's the fun stuff, right? The body keeps score. But then on top of that, we get to keep score as well. Chin forward, Dhanurasana, floor bow, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside, two inches below the toes, thumbs with your index fingers, point your toes, squeeze your butt, look up towards the ceiling and start to kick into your hands. Good, continuously keep kicking without stopping, without intermission, it's the kick that drives your posture. Notice if you're rocking back and forth, hold still, just freeze between your ribs and your hips. Try not to kick quite as hard if you're rocking back. Bring your knees in, feet out, wrists straight, squeeze the shoulders together, look up towards the ceiling, kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly with control, lower down, look to your right, eyes open, mouth closed. As you inhale, feel the backs of your ribs expand. As you exhale, let your shoulders soften. Chin forward, last one on the stomach, might as well do it, bend your legs. Go out your feet, come the outside, two inches below the toes, squeeze your push, point your toes, hold on tight, look up, and kick into your hands. You're kicking in two directions. You're kicking back and you're kicking up. If your knees hurt in this posture, don't kick quite as hard, or think about kicking up more than you're kicking back. So you really want to use your glutes, wrist straight, keep your neck in line with the rest of your spine, kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly lower down, look to your left, and take a breath. Okay, bring your chin forward, put your hands on the floor, push up, come to the top of your mat for a fix firm, sweep to the drop I'm gonna show you from the side. So start in tabletop, open your knees, open your feet, point your toes to the back of your mat so the inside of your feet stay parallel. As you're ready, you're gonna walk your hands back and sink your hips down. You can keep your hands in front of you, beside you or behind you the whole time. One day you will sit down between your heels, doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. If you can sit down between your heels with your knees on the floor, put your hands on your feet, right elbow down, left elbow down, drop your head back, head to floor, tuck your chin in, neck shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows, each other and hold. Wherever you are is just perfect. You want a gentle stretch through your toes, ankles, knees, and hips, but never a point of pain. Change. Put your hands on your feet. Push yourself up. Head up last. Turn around. Savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. I love this yoga. I have been missing a sock for a week. And as we look back, I was like, oh, it's under my couch. I just haven't seen it. Um, <laughs> even when we're like confined to our space so much during COVID, right? Like I know my apartment like the back of my hand. And this yoga just taught me to see my apartment in a different way. Uh, sometimes yoga, just moving our body, I mean, can literally help us find missing socks under our couch. But it can also help us like 
take some time to work out some other, you know, unsolved mysteries or problems in our life as well. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good, come to the top of your mat, second set. Open your knees, open your feet. Take your time, slowly walk your hands back. One day, sink your hips down. Doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. Put your palms on your soles. Right elbow, left elbow. Drop your head back, head to floor. Tuck your chin in, neck, shoulders on the floor, arms over your head. Grab your elbows, each other, and hold if that's easy. Slide your knees back together, but knees never come off the floor. Change, put your hands on your feet. Push yourself up, head up blocks, turn around. Savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. If the sit-ups ever bother your back, remember that you can roll off to the side and skip the sit-up. The sit-ups, like everything else we do, are optional. So you can roll off to the side here or legs together, arms over your head. Tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Wonderful. Come to the back of your mat, half tortoise, Arta Karmasana, show me from the side. Sit knees, feet together. I'm going to come a little closer to you. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels, arms over your head, palms together. Cross your thumbs, stretch up and go down. Forehead to floor, little fingers to floor. Tilt your pinky fingers down. Try to get elbows and wrists off the floor. Just the knife edges of your pinky fingers touch the floor. The rest of your arms are in the air. As you inhale, reach your arms forward. Exhale, sink your hips down, stretch, stretch, stretch. Change, come on up, arms together, palms together, good, arms down, turn around, Savasana. Um, we are in the middle of what's called the fixed firm series, where the tops of your feet, ankles, shins, and knees are fixed firmly on the floor. Um, if any of these postures bother, like your toes, your ankles, or your knees, you can always roll up your mat a little bit so that there's extra padding under that like sensitive part of the body. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good. Come to the back of your mat, second set, knees, feet together, hips on your heels, arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumbs, stretch up, and go down. You can also put one or both hands on the floor and walk yourself in. Otherwise, forehead to floor, little fingers to floor, reach your arms forward, sink your hips down, re-energize, reorganize, revitalize, stretch. Change, come on up, arms and ears. Very nice, arms down, turn around, so last one. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good, come to the top of your mat, camel, ustrasana, our deepest back bend. Stand on your knees, six inches between your knees and your feet. Put your hands on your lower lumbar spine, thumbs outside, fingers down to the floor. Push your hips forward, keep your eyes open, and start to look up. This is a posture that might um, turn on your central nervous system a little bit. Lift your nose, lift your chin, one day head drops back. You don't have to scream like you do if you fall off the side of the mountain. But if you start to feel a little bit activated, that's normal. Option to stay here or keep your hands on your back, go back halfway through to the middle. Option to stay here or when you're ready, right hand down, grab your right heel. Left hand down, grab your left heel. Thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels. Push your hips forward, lift your chest up, drop your head back. Look for your toes behind you. Good. Change. Put your hands on your back. Push yourself up carefully. Head up last. Turn around. Slap my head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. So some of us might be rock climbers, but for you know, for most of us, right, we might not have the experience of like falling off the side of a rock. But I bet you've had an experience where like a coworker says something really inappropriate and you wanna scream, right? But it's not appropriate to scream. So you hold it in. What happens after that experience, right? We have to do something to discharge that emotion. Sometimes we don't have the luxury of like screaming in the moment like you do when you're a professional rock climber. 
Um, but you still have the opportunity to do something to describe that, right? Whether it's yoga or a run or just like a nice glass of water, like a five minute meditation on YouTube. Make sure that at some point, those moments where you want to scream and you can't, it has to come out somehow, right? Sometimes it comes out in camel pose because it's an activated nervous system posture. Um, and this is a wonderful place to like let that stuff go, but just make sure in those moments in life where you want to scream and you can't, make sure later on, you don't actually have to scream, but you do something to get through that, right? Our emotions are tunnels. We have to go through them when we get stuck. That's where we get burnout. That's why doing heart opening postures, stimulating postures like camel pose helps us to move through these tunnels and get through all that muck. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good, come to the top of your mat, second set, and open your knees a little wider, eight to 10 inches between your knees. Still keep six inches between your feet. Put your hands on your lower lumbar spine. Maybe bring elbows closer together behind you. Push your hips forward, look up, look back, and just work at your own rate. You can keep your hands on your back the whole time. One day, go back halfway. Eventually, or in the future, grab your heels. Press your hips forward, lift your chest up, rock your head back, take a breath. Okay, put your hands on your back, press yourself up with the support of your hands, head up last, turn around, Savasana. So after that stimulating back bend, we very much on purpose do rabbit pose and then head to knee pose and then stretching. All of these rounded or forward folding postures that calm, cool, and soothe the nervous system. Very much on purpose, the order, the sequence of these postures. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. So if you ever like don't want to do camel pose, just think after this, I'm going to round my spine, pull that knees feet together, hips on your heels, rabbit pose, make L's with your hands, like little bunny ears, grab your heels from the outside, thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, finger down, chin to chest. Abdomen in, forehead to knees, automatically top of head to floor, pull on your heels, don't lose the grip, lift your hips up. If there's a gap between your knees and head, you can walk your knees up one by one, but head stays in place. Um, if your grip is sliding or your feet are coming off the floor, ease up a little bit, full palm grip on your heels, hips forward, shoulders up, abdomen in, change, hips down, scroll down, curl, vertebra by vertebra, just by this, head up last, very nice, turn around. Shavasana. Take a breath. We want to give our spine an opportunity to reset between every set of every posture. Okay, legs together, arms over your head, flex your feet, squeeze your feet, sit up. Good, come to the middle of your mat, second set. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels, grab your heels from the outside, stretch up. Tuck your chin to your chest, so go down, chin to chest. Stomach in, forehead to knees, top of head to floor, pull on your heels, don't lose the grip, lift your hips up, squeeze your heels together, press your hips forward, lift your shoulders up, suck your stomach in, round your spine. Good, change hips down, slowly uncurl, head up last, turn around, Svasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your neck. Okay, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good, we're gonna do two quick sets of head to knee with stretching, Johnny Shirasana, right leg out to the top right corner of your mat, left leg in, inhale, arms over your head, stretch up. Exhale, turn to your right, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down. You can bend your right leg as much as you want, touch your knee and head together. Interlock your 10 fingers under the ball of your right foot and flex your toes back to your face. Change, arms up, left leg out, right leg all the way in, stretch up, turn to your left, tuck your chin to your chest, touch knee and head together. Flex your toes back, bend your elbows down, engage your abdominal wall. Bring your right sit bone down, right shoulder down, two shoulders in line. Change, arms up, both legs out in front of you. If you're skipping, sit up, stay here. Otherwise, lay down, let your spine realign and sit up. I'm going to show you from the side, Hashimoto Nasana stretching, bend your knees in front of your big toes with your peace sign fingers, middle and index fingers, 
thumbs on top, scoot your butt back right, left, right, left. Knees can stay bent if it helps you keep a flat back. If your legs are straight, try to lock your legs, puff up your chest, and pull forward. Stomach to thighs, pull. Chest to knees, stretch. One day pose and head touch. Good, change, come on up, turn around, Savasana. Lovely. Let's do it again. Legs together, arms over your head. Tuck your chin to your chest. Sit up. Second set, head to knee with stretching. Right leg out, left leg in. Make sure your legs make an L and 90 degree angle. No wider. Hip space square. Arms up, stretch up. Turn to your right. Tuck your chin to your chest and go down. Now, if it's easy to touch your forehead and knee together with a bent leg, slowly slide your heel forward. If your leg is straight, lock your leg. Bend elbows down. Left elbow down, left shoulder down, rolling to the left. Good change, arms up, left leg out, right leg in, stretch up. Turn to your left, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down. Elbows to floor, try to keep your right knee down, right hip down, right elbow down, right shoulder down, stomach in. Change, arms up, both legs out in front of you, lay down, and sit up. Hashimoto stretching, bend your knees, hook onto your big toes with peace sign fingers. Middle and index fingers, thumbs on top, scoot your butt back, right, left, right, left. Your legs are straight, lock your legs, pop up your chest, and start to fold forward. Stomach to thighs, pull, chest to knees, stretch, one day toes and head touch. Good, change, come on up, turn around, Savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. Got a cramp. Cramps are interesting. Sometimes when you cramp, it's like dehydration or a lack of, um, like a, you know, like uh, words are hard, a lack of mineral in your body. But sometimes when we cramp, especially in our um, a certain like thumb or second toe, it's actually just neuromuscular confusion when your back starts to move. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Yeah, so if you've ever had like a cramp in your hamstring when you do a back bend or a cramp in your toe when you do a back bend, it's just neuromuscular confusion when your back starts to work. Spine twist, right arm and drops and bend your left leg on the floor, touch your right heel to your left knee corner, right arm behind you, left arm up and over, grab your left knee with your left hand, hand heel and knee touch. Inhale, stretch out. Exhale, look over right shoulder twist. You can keep your right hand behind you for balance. You can also reach it behind you. Grab your left thigh with your right hand for a half spine. Inhale, stretch up, lengthen. Exhale, look over your right shoulder twist and twist and twist. Good, change, unwind, swap out your legs. Wee, bend your right leg on the floor. Touch your left heel to right knee. Left arm behind you, right arm up. Wee, and over. Grab your right knee with your right hand, hand heel and touch. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, look over left shoulder twist. So you can keep your hand behind you or wrap it behind you for a half spine. Keep spine straight, chest up, rib cage open, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look back, twist and twist and twist. Good, change, unwind, turn around, Savasana. So in a world where most of us like sit still or hunch forward a little bit, when we start to like wake up our back muscles, of course those muscles or those nerves can get a little bit confused, which is when we like cramp. Um, but remember this yoga, oh, so amazing. We move our spine in six different directions multiple times. Like every day is spine day in 26 and through yoga. I love it. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good. So not only does the body keep score, but the body interacts. Like, you know, a nerve in my neck can talk to a, a nerve in my fingertip, right? So just keep that in mind. Our body's always um, in connection, not just with our mind, but with our bodies always in relationship with other parts of the body as well, all working in harmony. Um, sit well for final breathing. You can sit knees, feet together, hips on your heels, hands on your thighs, or you can sit on your bed. Lock your arms, lift your chest. All you have to do is exhale. Five, four, three, two, one. Lift your lips, swallow a couple times. Exhale through your mouth as you pull your abdomen in. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Good for you. Honor yourself. Give yourself a hug. High five. Pat on the back. Turn around. Savasana. Head to the front of your mat. Feet to the back of your mat.
If you need to leave, I totally understand. If you have time, make time, find those Savasana. So again, we can't choose everything that happens like to our body in this life, right? And our body keeps score, but we do get to choose some things. So, you know, like with your free time, right? Good for you for making it to yoga today. For now with your final savasana, are you spending your final savasana like fixing your shorts and wiping sweat? Or can you just take a moment here to practice a little bit of muscle memory for stillness, for relaxation? Just bringing your whole self to your breath. This is a practice and it's something that doesn't necessarily come naturally to us. So take a moment here if you have the time just to practice stillness, just to practice relaxation, and to practice bringing your full self to your breath. Take a slow inhale through your nose, feel your chest rise. Slow exhale through your nose, let your shoulders fall. Be very careful what you tell yourself. Your thoughts are your prayers, and the universe only knows how to say yes. 